Hello everybody, Maven here, and before we start the video, I just wanted to point out that I just found out the existence of that button there, the super thanks button, and then there's also that join button as well, and uh, apparently I could have had these enabled on my channel for almost two years now, but I didn't know about them, so just letting you know they're there now, they are live, they exist, so if you felt like supporting, by all means feel free, and thank you so much if you do, and let's start the video, hope you enjoy. All right, once again, hello everybody, Maven here, and luck was finally on my side this week as I got the Buried Bloodline exotic sidearm from the Warlord's Ruin dungeon to drop for me, and man, am I impressed with this thing, but 99% of Destiny players probably wouldn't agree. But this has to be one of the most underrated exotics in Destiny 2 history. You know how when you got the Virgilis Curve, or the Ex Deris, or the Deterministic Chaos. You tried it out one time and then immediately dismantled it or threw it in your vault and forgot about it. Well, the Buried Bloodline is one of those types of guns. 15 seconds of fame and then lost and forgotten. But as an avid build crafter, I can tell you from experience that the Buried Bloodline absolutely breaks tons of builds wide open and should be a huge part of the Destiny 2 meta, but it's not. And I'll show you why it should be. So let's get to it, and as always, your interaction is the key to this video's success, so if you'd be so kind as to drop a like and a comment, it really means a lot, and I hope you enjoy. Now obviously the reason Buried Bloodline is so good is because he can get Devour on non-void subclasses, but you would expect that we want that for the sake of survival, but that's actually the secondary thing we want. The primary reason the Buried Bloodline is so good is because of grenade regeneration. This is by far the strongest grenade spam exotic weapon in the game. Yes, even better than the Traveler's Chosen. A lot of newer Destiny players may not realize that other than the full healing on kills, Devour also grants you grenade energy on final blows. So when we pair that along with the perk Demolitionist, it gets a little bit crazy. So I gotta demonstrate, but first I wanted to point out that I think Demolitionist may have gotten a shadow nerf. So this is how it always worked, as stated on D2 Foundry. Final blows grant 10% of grenade energy on most archetypes, but things like fusions and shotguns have always been the stronger demolitionist and pugilist options because they grant 20% ability energy on final blows. Now we're going to test out the Riptide with Demolitionist. As you can see, it doesn't quite look like it's granting 20%. That looks more like 10% to me. And on a machine gun with Demolitionist, final blows should be granting 10% grenade energy, but that looks more like 5. So I think Demolitionist may have possibly been halved. But on the bright side, Devour seems the same as before. Testing here on an Igneous Hammer that does not have Demolitionist, final blows with Devour seem to grant around 15% grenade energy. So according to that, when we stack Devour with a Demolitionist machine gun, five kills will fully recharge our nade. It's extremely efficient for grenade spam in an ad clear scenario. This for me personally has always been the highlight of the Void subclass. Whenever I'm on Void, I build around grenades and Devour because it's just too good to pass up. But now, because of the Buried Bloodline, we can do this on any subclass while stacking it with that subclass's methods of grenade regeneration. Think about it. Arc has Ionic Traces that feed you tons of ability energy. Solar has Ember of Searing to create fire sprites which grant grenade energy. Stasis has Whisper of Shards to grant grenade energy when you shatter crystals. And Strand has Threat of Generation to just generate grenade energy as you deal damage. And the fact that this gun allows you to jam the Void subclass's grenade synergy into another subclass and combine them together is just ridiculous. So I'm going to show some examples starting on Warlock, just a little flex and proof of concept. The Crown of Tempest boosts your ability regen when you get an arc ability kill. So we can just proc that Devour and then create an arc soul and go to town. And in this clip, I'm not even going to shoot a single bullet just to show the effectiveness of Devour on a Crown of Tempest build. Other things that synergize with Devour on Warlock are obviously the Osmiomancy Gloves build, because you'll be able to spam even more stasis turrets than intended. And if you create a Verity's Brow setup on literally any subclass, Devour will make it extremely nutty, and you can basically spam any grenade on any subclass back to back non-stop. Personally, I enjoy that with the Strand Grapple. And on to Hunter, Devour actually makes the Moth Keeper Wraps Strand build pretty viable. The grenade spam is through the roof, as you can see in the background gameplay, it's kind of crazy. But really, you can take great advantage of Devour with any Strand Grenade because of the Widow Silk aspect giving you two grenade charges. And Stasis also makes great use of Devour with the Frosty's Shatter Dive build or the Renewal Grasp with Dusk Field build. I did build videos on both of these, by the way, shameless plug. These builds already spam nades back to back as is, and Devour will absolutely be overkill. And personally, my favorite thing to have Devour on on Hunter is Shinobu's Vow. 
It's literally just non-stop, endless grenade spam. The only downside is that they're skip grenades, so they don't hit very hard, but still you can jolt everything on command. It's so it's amazing for ad clear and can apply a BOT to bosses. But now moving on to Titan, and believe me, I saved the best for last. First off, we got the Ashen Wake build. And I mean the gameplay is gonna speak for itself. Your fusion grenade gets refunded for final blows depending on the enemy tier. And between impact induction with Ember searing with Devour, it's nutty. Man, it's even nuttier than Mr. Peanut. And any build that runs Armamentarium would love Devour. Another shameless plug, but that Armamentarium Infinite Grapples build I did would love this gun. Similar to that, but any build that runs Heart of Most Light could heavily benefit off of it as well. And another great part of Devour, as mentioned earlier, is the healing. And that is absolutely massive for subclasses that have next to no survivability, such as Stasis and especially Arc. Whisper of Chains and Rhyme are pretty pitiful for survivability, as well as Spark of Resistance. They're definitely not as good as Woven Mail. So giving these subclasses a healing option is absolutely massive and something that we never had access to. And now, ladies, it's time after all of the testing I did with this gun on several different builds, I present to you the one that I think benefits from the Buried Bloodline the most. And that is Arc Titan with Heart of the Most Light. This has always been one of my favorite builds, and of recent times, the build was incomplete without an Arc Demolitionist machine gun. So once we got the Song of Iriute, I felt that this build was finally done and couldn't get any better, but I was wrong. This build, as is, can already generate a mad amount of grenade energy because of the Heart of the Most Light ability spam paired with the Demolitionist machine gun, but now it's just on steroids, man. You can throw another Storm Grenade well before the other one runs out. And remember, our Storm Grenades themselves are massively buffed by three different ways. One being the Empowerment ability from the Heart of the Most Light, two being the Touch of Thunder aspect that turns the Storm Grenade into a roaming thundercloud, and three being Spark of Magnitude to make that Storm Cloud last longer. Now this build is very comparable to the Hunter Shinobu's Vow build, but the reason this video is focused around this build instead is because the Storm Grenades are just stupid strong, way stronger than the Skips. Just wanted to show a comparison against Carl, and we also got Spark of Shock, obviously, to make our grenades jolt. That's just a requirement whenever you play an arc, and the grenade chunks Carl for exactly half of his health. And comparing that against the rocket from the Apex Predator, it's not even close. Those Empowered Touch of Thunder Magnitude Storm Grenades are no joke, and the fact that we can spam them back to back is just insane for both ad clear and damage. And that's not all, I didn't even unlock their full potential, because the Buried Bloodline actually has a catalyst. I don't have it yet because I immediately started testing stuff and creating this video as soon as I got the gun. But what the catalyst does is that when you have Devour, shooting a target will weaken them, which is a 15% debuff just further adding to our Storm Grenade's potency as well as our Thunder Crash when we come across a boss. And it would also be awesome to soften up a target for our Scatter Signal to do some monstrous DPS, and yes, we are indeed running double specials because we're basically just using the Machine Gun as our primary, and we don't really run out of ammo for it too often because we're also punching enemies a lot of the time. And the reason for that is because of our Glove mods like Impact Induction and Heavy Handed, so I might as well break down the entire build here because everything ties into each other. So when you have the Knockout Aspect proc, which you can easily proc just by damaging an enemy, it counts your uncharged melees as powered melee, so it will trigger your glove mods. And when we use our thruster ability, we can proc bomber and outreach for some ability energy, but also proc powerful attraction to scoop up all the orbs around us. And we are making tons of orbs via spark of amplitude while amplified our multi-kills generate orbs. So when we do our little thruster dodge to scoop up the orbs, we're also procking our boot mods like Absolution and Innervation for extra ability energy, but you can also run Recuperation in this slot as well if you have trouble with surviving. But then we also have stacks on stacks here with Charged Up, so likely when we use that thruster to scoop up the orbs, we immediately just get four stacks of armor charge, and we're gonna spend that all on Grenade Kickstart just further adding to that grenade spam. And then I got a reserve mod for the machine gun because why not, and then you can swap whatever resist you need for the threat modifier. And then I got Ashes to Assets and Hands On for super energy because we're ability spamming and the harmonic siphon to bank orbs on our machine gun double kills. And then the last fragment slot not yet mentioned is Spark of Ion, so defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace, so your grenade is going to do that immediately because of Spark of Shock, so you just refund some ability energy, it's like another pseudo kickstart effect. Now this is the loadout that I would recommend, but if you wanted to run a primary weapon along with a DPS heavy, that is fine as well. Now before we end this video, we got one final question. Is the Buried Bloodline actually strong as a gun, or is it just a utility piece? 
Well, let's do a side-by-side -side Carl comparison, comparing it against our Song of Eriut machine gun. And I was actually impressed at how much damage the Berry Bloodline was doing. And remember, this is without the 15% debuff from the Catalyst. This is just the base damage. And I honestly thought it would be way weaker than this. So if you got the Catalyst, it's not actually a bad idea to pull out the Bloodline and fire that weakened shot and then just DPS with the gun itself rather than swapping to something else. Obviously, if you're close range, just use your fusion rifle, but if not, you can use the Buried Bloodline, no problem. So that about does it for the build and my constant praising of the Buried Bloodline. I mean, come on, it weakens, it heals, and grants you grenade energy. I mean, what more could you want in an exotic weapon? And one last little note about the Buried Bloodline for those that didn't know, you proc that Devour by getting four kills with the weapon, and it doesn't have to be a multi-kill. So for example, you can get three kills and then you can wait like an entire two minutes and then get the fourth kill and you will get that devour. You just gotta get four kills in a single life, which is pretty easy because the gun hits pretty hard actually. And I don't know if I show this in the video or not, but I did use this build to farm the solo legend lost sector and this sidearm was actually destroying those barrier champions pretty easily. It hits pretty hard and there's anti-barrier sidearm this season and the range is very impressive as well. And I can tell you for sure, this is not the last of Barry Bloodline you'll see on this channel. I'm definitely gonna do more builds of this thing. Well, I'm gonna get the catalyst first, of course. And I know a lot of people in the comments are gonna say, Maven, the reason this gun's not meta is because a lot of people haven't gotten it to drop yet. I understand, but if everyone gets it to drop, I feel like this gun should be an integral part of the meta, at least for ad clear activities, because that's where it really shines. And another common question I get when I do build videos is people ask, is it good in a raid or a dungeon? And uh, let me tell you, in the background gameplay, I might have shown at some point in the video of doing a hydroponics delta run, and ads in hydroponics delta have double the health of ads in raids, and it totally shredded through that and also totally shredded through that legend law sector. So absolutely, yes, it can demolish raids and dungeons, at least for the ad clear encounters. So enough of my blabbling, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. The dim loadout link to this build will be down below in the description and also the pinned comment if you'd like to give it a try. And if you got any buddies who are Titan mains, feel free to share this video with them. I'm sure they find it enjoyable. And if you enjoyed the video, remember your interaction means everything to the success of this video. So if you'd be so kind as to drop a like and a comment, it really goes a long way. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Would love to have you here. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.